Okay, I think we'll get started. We've got quite a lot to cover today. So welcome to the Helix webinar series. Today's session is on what's new in BMC operation management. This is for the 24.3 release. I'm joined by Amol Rastogi, our principal product manager, who's going to present to you today. Before we get started, just a couple of reminders for those in particular that are new to um, Zoom. We have a Q&A section that you'll find at the bottom. So if you do have any questions during his presentation, please put them into the Q&A. It's roughly going to be around 45 minutes or so long. Um, so in that case, we'll have 15 minutes towards the end. So do please put your questions in and then we'll take them to the live um, audience. So I'm now going to hand over to Amol to give his formal introduction and to get us started. Over to you, Amol. Uh, thanks, Samantha. I hope you can hear me. I can, loud and clear. All right. So uh, my name is Anmol Rastogi, and I'm Principal Product Manager for uh, Operation Management, Petrol Agent, and KM. Uh, I joined BMC uh, somewhere around in November 2022, uh, but I have been uh, into the same domain from a long time now. Uh, Today, I'm going to, you know, walk through some of the interesting content that we have released as a part of 24.3, but uh, not only 24.3, but I'm also covering, you know, some of the monthly pushes release as well, which we have done uh, in the last uh, two uh, months and so. So with that, actually, let me, you know, uh, kick off this uh, meeting. So <clears throat> just to give you some you know release highlight uh to begin with i uh, think everybody's favorite here is the advanced anomaly detection uh so back in days you know when this anomaly detection was not there uh, customer needs to you know go through the alarm policies and need to select you know uh, the kpis and metrics and then they need to basically you know uh, at the threshold, uh, that needs to be, you know, uh, once the threshold is deviated, then the alarm needs to be created, right? And it's become very difficult sometimes uh, that, uh, you know, you know, customers knows that on what machine uh, the threshold needs to be this and on what machine the threshold needs to be this, right? So it's become very uh, uh, painful job, right? So <clears throat> now with this anomaly detection, what we do is basically, uh, we provide two types of uh, baseline. One is for the key performance indicator metrics and another one is for the, all the performance metrics. The users basically can control this uh, behavior uh, uh, for generating an auto anomaly event using this uh, toggle switch off and switch on button. This was there already in 24.2, uh, but you know what we did is uh, after working with several customers that uh, Previously, you know, when, whenever there is a baseline deviation happen, uh, the event was raised as a kind of like you know, warning event, uh, which was not acceptable. Uh, so we have given the options now uh, to control the severity of the auto anomaly event. And we see many of the customers are actually uh, looking for the information events rather than, you know, uh, warning event due to various reasons like, you know, for warning events the incidents tickets are getting created so they don't want to create uh you know incidents ticket because sometimes you know the auto anomaly uh, generates noise so uh that is one of the improvement that we have done uh in 24.3 release uh then moving on to the next item uh, what I will do basically, I will explain uh one of the pain point for Sara, uh, which is the knock operator. Uh, what she wants, basically, she wants to enrich the event, you know, from the impacted software instance in service model to pass information such as worker uh, work group details, right? And who is the owner of that particular software instance uh, or, uh, you know, who is the uh, owner uh, of the uh, particular host on which the software instance is, you know, uh, discovered, right? So, Sometimes this information tends to be present on a different node or maybe, you know, where uh, the software instance uh, uh, is installed on that particular node or sometimes, you know, uh, that software instance may be on the node which is discovered, but uh, the information is available at an independent node, right, or independent host. So sometimes this information becomes absolutely uh, critical to pass 
uh, whenever you know to pass along with the event whenever the incident needs to be created uh in previous releases you know uh, in previous versions of bmc helix operation management uh, it's a very tedious job uh, to get this information but now what we have done we have introduced this uh, new function which is called you know lookup node details by kind uh, under the uh, event advanced enrichment now uh, what you know user needs to do on this particular uh, function as you can see uh, there are two things that they need to do First of all, you know, go into the advanced uh, enrichment uh, event policy. And from there, basically, you know, uh, select this function. And then uh, there is a node selection criteria. And this node selection criteria, uh, basically, you can specify uh, the matching node. And if you will look at uh, the query that is defined into the node selection criteria, it is actually aligned with the BMC Helix discovery uh, uh, query. So what I am here uh, selecting is the kind of like, you know, uh, new location in name and, you know, I am specifying that name should basically contain uh, uh, the, the server, right? And then I am defining also along with this node selection criteria that what node attributes I wanted to fetch, right? So ideally, you know, whenever there is an event, that events get attached to the to that particular node where it belongs to. But now with this lookup node details by kind, right? You can go to the independent node into the BNC healing discovery, and then you can fetch these kind of attributes, and then you can select, you know, what kind of uh, what node kind of you know uh, you wanted to do the query, right, or do the enrichment. So with this, you know, you will be able to enrich the information which you stored into this node attributes to fetch. Obviously, I mean, uh, after the node lookup details, uh, uh, there needs to be a requirement uh, to add the enrich section as well. Uh, so that I think uh, everybody is familiar with that. Uh, but this this function is recently introduced as a part of 24.3. Uh, another interesting functions uh, that has been uh, added again as a part of the refinement policy. Uh, event refinement policy is uh, the associate event to node function. And uh, before I jump into, uh, you know, describing what this function can do, uh, let me, you know, put together one uh, problem statement, which uh, Sara, uh, in my case, uh, she is the operator here. Uh, what she wanted to do, you know, she wanted to analyze the system events and discovers that uh, that then event is associ associated with the host and node with the, you know, uh, impacted business service, right? Uh, what does this mean that when you define a service model, right? In that service model, there is host and then there is a, you know, uh, a software instance uh, hosted on that particular host. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're not using this function, then in those scenarios, uh, the impact of the event will be shown you at the host, but not onto the right, you know, uh, 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 service uh, or the software instance, right? Where this uh, event is uh, generated for. Then she she basically, uh, when she was analyzing this, then she uh, find out that, hey, look, this is a problem. Uh, and then uh, this requires to be addressed, right? So then she identified that, okay, oh, now I have a new function, which is called associate event to node, right? Uh, so what this function do is basically uh, uh, this this function uh, is there first of all in the refinement policy to enrich the topology information in the event by using uh, uh, the uh, string event slots in addition to uh, the default topology slots which is defined in the event class. You can use this uh, function in the refinement policies to fetch you know topology details from the BMC Helix discovery by specifying, uh, you know, the uh, string event slots in addition to the, again, uh, you know, uh, default slots. Uh, so this features, you know, all together gives you the flexibility, you know, to perform the topology enrichment by using the event policies. Again, uh, here the selection criteria is almost the same where you need to define, you know, what is the node selection criteria and what kind of, you know, uh, 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 node that you are looking for. So once that information is fetched, then again, you can, you know, uh, uh, use some kind of like enrichment 
uh, to use uh, uh, to to basically enrich uh, the slots. So this gives you the flexibility to associate an event, you know, uh, to the software instance rather than you know to associate an event to the to the host. This was again great enhancement uh, introduced uh, into uh, the twenty four dot three release, uh, and this is related to the dynamic enrichment. Uh, again, I will bring uh, Sara, which is the operator, uh, and I will bring out uh, uh, the pain point which Sara Sara is feeling. So, Sara uh, again, uh, she is an operator, uh, but she did not know much about the you know uh, REST APIs of the B Home. And she quickly wanted, you know, to update the information into the data table, you know, uh, without going through the hassles of using the REST APIs for updating the information. Again, this is part of the dynamic enrichment uh, by using the CSV content. Uh, so earlier, you know, what we allowed to do is, let's say, you know, if uh, the data table information needs to be updated, uh, so that update call is actually allowed through the apis not you know uh, through the interface uh, but as a part of this particular enhancement now we uh, are allowing the users to you know uh, provide uh, the input source uh, which has uh, the refinement into uh, the data uh, which is updated for some of the data uh, then you can basically, you know, as you can see, I have highlighted also here uh, that this update dynamic data file option is uh, introduced into the interface. Now, Sara, no need to basically, you know, understand or go through this uh, uh, hassle of using the REST APIs rather than, you know, she can just go here and uh, attach the file. Now, with this, once the data file is updated, right, at one place, so uh, the advantage here is that what we have given here, uh, suppose if the data file is actually used by, let's say, you know, uh, uh, n number of policies, so that will, you know, uh, pick up those changes automatically uh, without, you know, uh, actually user going into uh, the, uh, the each and individual, you know, uh, uh, event policies to update the data files. So this feature basically gives uh, more flexibility in uh, terms of, you know, allowing update data tables from the user interface in addition to the REST APIs. Moving on to the next item, which is uh, more of uh, the visualization perspective, uh, or rather, send, rather uh, I will say it is more for uh, the user uh, uh, you know, improved improvement, user interface improvement perspective. Uh, what we have introduced is uh, this new color plate uh, where you see uh, where you can actually clearly identify, you know, uh, the difference between the color uh, from critical to major and from major to minor and minor to warning and warning to information, right? So previously, uh, there were very little difference between critical to major uh, in terms of color uh, coding. Uh, so that becomes basically one of uh, the issues when uh, users goes uh, and highlight uh, events, you know, in, in big screens or in big dashboards, right, uh, which are projected on those big, big screen. They're not able to identify, clearly differentiate, you know, uh, the color between critical and the major. Uh, and this was also the same case uh, when we looked at into the service monitoring page as well. Uh, where we uh, have the service health view uh, dashboard. So in that, in there also, you know, there were some problems uh, to identify, you know, which uh, services are actually in critical state and which services are actually in the major state, right? So to so be aligned uh, these two together uh, with the new color uh, uh, coding uh, that you can, uh, in that way, you can actually, you know, clearly uh, identify, you know, what exactly uh, the critical services or what exactly the critical uh, events are there. There is still some improvement that's required, which we are doing in the upcoming releases in terms of, you know, highlighting the text, because if you will see uh, still in the critical uh, color, uh, the critical is actually black, which is not, you know, uh, very much clear to the users again. Uh, so we are working on enhancing this text also so that it is clearly visible to the users. This was again, you know, uh, done as an announcement. Uh, moving on uh, to again, 
on the enrichment side uh in especially in the advanced enrichment policies you know uh managing sky uh sky characters in the event data you know by using uh this care function so we have uh introduced this new care functions uh what it will do basically uh uh you can you know uh let's say uh, if you wanted to use uh, or or let me put it into this way uh, again uh, by taking an example of uh, sara uh, she is again once again the operator uh, so she needs basically more flexibility for managing the characters in the event data to achieve this goal she plans to enrich you know uh, record separators a sky character in the event data with other characters okay in the advanced enrichment policies now this enrichment which she wanted to achieve helps her adding more meaningful information to the event and process them effectively so this function basically what it allow it uses the output of this functions you know you can you can use this function and you can give you know what sky characters that you wanted to you know uh, translate uh, and then you wanted to you know store that translation and then you wanted to you uh, store once you store this information into one variable that variable can be used either in the replace function remove function or append functions basically uh, to you know uh, did more meaningful enrichment so that was again uh, you know one of the important enhancement that we did as a part of you know 24.3 release moving on to uh, the next important item uh, i would also like to call it out that uh, the item that the feature that i am going to talk about is feature flag item uh, one of the important thing uh, i think uh, especially you know the customers who are coming from uh, t swarm to b hop migration right what they were asking for that you know uh, they used to have this annotation uh, information right uh, so that annotation information is very uh, much you know uh, meaningful uh, whenever there is an event and that information is actually containing a lot of insight that you know what went wrong right so customer used to run uh, those uh, analysis on this annotation that okay now let's say for example if my cpu uh, utilization crosses uh, 90% of threshold right i wanted to understand you know what are the top 10 uh, cpu processes which are uh, having uh, the cpu usage uh, high right so i used to get i mean customers used to get uh, these details uh, uh, in the form of annotation as a part of the event so which we are doing this so this feature is available as in feature flag item uh, if you wanted to uh, you know have uh, uh, you you wanted to try this out you can you know connect either support or with me you know we will be helping you uh, to enable this feature uh, the reason you know why we have not uh, enabled this uh, feature or gated this feature because we wanted to get some feedback first and the second thing is that uh, there are you know kms which also needs to be enhanced in order to you know provide uh, the event based annotation uh, there are general annotation there is event based annotation so general annotation is available as a part of event but uh, we are enhancing our kms also especially the windows and the unix game uh, to provide more insights whenever there is an event happen so this is going to be as in kind of like you know feature uh, future item uh, for the upcoming release uh, another uh, important thing uh, that we uh, understand from our customer is that uh, they wanted to have uh, the understanding on Uh, from the compliance perspective or from the auditing perspective uh, so uh, customers you know uh, have asked for providing more you know uh, auditing around the monitoring policies and uh, the aqt command that is being you know uh, run by particular user so as you can see that you know uh, we already have one uh, bmc helix audit dashboard monitoring policies and aqt commands were not added into uh, those uh, uh, audit dashboards so now it is all, uh, already added it's available out of the box so you can see here that you know this particular user has changed the monitoring policies uh, uh, and then there will be a resource name set and all this information will be available right and it will also tell what time uh, this information is changed right 
so this helps basically you know to to identify or run what if analysis you know uh, kind of like what if analysis the what changes has been done by uh, this particular user on what policies and if you wanted to bring those changes back again you know uh, if you wanted to override those changes again on the same policies or not right so this helps you to take decisions and at the same time you know it helps you uh, to meet your compliance need as well so that's part of the release uh, moving on to the next item uh, which is uh, uh, announcement from the internal you know uh, api's perspective uh, so uh, we we provide the custom slots you know uh, in the event in the, of the custom class like tam01 tam02 and so on up to i guess tam10 tam uh be if there is no straightforward way uh, that you can you know change those custom uh, slots name to the meaningful uh, slots uh, you need to basically you know go through the configuration files and then you know whenever those configuration file updated then your changes get overridden and things like that right so there are a lot of challenges basically uh, to change those slots name to the more meaningful name but now we have a full fledged uh, api introduced in the uh, past rele past releases where uh, you can use these apis to change those slots name to the more meaningful uh, name as you can see that uh, in this particular example you know uh, even though the class is na uh, nagios uh, event uh, uh, but uh, it is still showing you know pn underscore cbit now that doesn't make sense uh, in sense that because you need to every time uh, hover uh, over this event uh, class uh, to know that whether the severity is coming from nagios or it is coming from you know other source so in this case you know uh, when you use this api and change this pn underscore severity to nagios severity right so it gives you the more clarity that okay uh, uh, if uh, this particular uh, nagios severity is coming then definitely it belongs to the nagios class right so this gives you uh more flexibility and more meaningful insight uh on the event that is being raised from the various sources uh another important update that we have done as a part of you know uh, uh 24.3 release is that mark devices for deletion uh, so uh for the patrol agent you know um, there was already the flow that if the device is you know if the data is or if the metrics are no longer collected and you know uh, the device remain uh, in a stale form for some more time through the patrol agent then uh, behom basically uh, automatically you know delete uh, those uh, devices or instances that are belongs to those devices right so that that flow was there but it was kind of like you know broken uh, from the intelligent integration perspective uh, where intelligent integration you know uh, stop sending uh, stop streaming the matrix for the instances of the devices then in those scenarios what used to happen those devices and uh, instances will still remain as an active uh, in b hub right and that's uh, creates basically a lot of clutter uh, in the environment which becomes very difficult for customers to clean right and every time they basically come back to us and they ask to run some scripts in the back end uh, by us and then you know it's clean their environment now with this 24.3 uh, we have introduced this uh, uh, auto deletion uh, based on uh, the mark for delete object so for example you know let's say if intelligent integration you know uh, did not stream uh, a particular matrix uh, for a particular instance or if that instance is not at all you know uh, streaming any matrix then that instance uh, will be marked as a kind of like you know a mark for deletion so that will be mfd uh, and then based on that uh, what vm vhom has done uh, they will continuously run one scheduler job in the background to see you know what are uh, the instances or devices which are marked for deletion so what they will do what what uh, the scheduler job will do is actually it will identify and then you know uh, it will keep in their uh, uh, database uh, uh, this will keep this information in their database to to see you know if this continuously happen for the next 7 days right because 
this seven days uh, important because in seven days, let's say, you know, if again, uh, all of a sudden the device become active, right? So we will again remove this MFD flag uh, from those devices. Uh, and then we will bring those devices as, as an uh, live uh, devices. But let's say for this continuous seven days, there is no streaming happen on those devices or instances, then then only, you know, Home will go and uh, clear those instances. So in that way, you will be able to retain the clean state of your uh, environment, while at the same time, you will also minimize the impact of uh, the device, which, you know, maybe down for two, three days, you did not realize, but after two, three days, you realize that, okay, the device is up. Uh, but again, you know, uh, uh, you don't want to delete those devices and you wanted to make sure that uh, the devices are streaming. So that was uh, the use case actually, which we worked with the customers. We solved this problem uh, by introducing this intelligence into uh, the system. Uh, some of the uh, important uh, update that we done, uh, we have done, uh, especially around the event APIs, is to up allow the updates, you know, uh, for the blackout uh, events as well. Uh, especially, you know, uh, on the closed event side, right? So there are some uh, uh, scenarios where we work with the customers, uh, especially, you know, uh, for kind of like doing the what if analysis after closing an event, right? For example, uh, with one of the customers that I was working, they wanted to uh, run the automation. And with that automation, actually, you know, uh, once the automation run that in the next cycle, the event get closed, right? And then, the automation basically may take some time, you know, to run, uh, because, but the problem is still fixed, but, uh, you know, the automation is still taking time to return, uh, the, the information back to the events, right? So this was allowed back into the TS home days, uh, but, uh, in the B home, we stopped that flow. You know, if the event get closed, then you don't update the, any event slot, uh, or any, you know, custom event slots that are meant for this purpose, right? So we allowed that now customer can use these APIs uh, to update the closed event as well during the blackout. So this, this basically, you know, brings more insights uh, of in the event. Uh, we, what we have uh, also done is uh, we, we stopped basically, you know, publication, uh, the events update for the canceled incident. So now what has been that? Uh, whenever uh, there is an event, right? And if that event is uh, creating an incidence into the IC, ITSM tool, and if that incident somehow, uh, you know, manually somebody put into the canceled uh, state, right? So, uh, in the previous release, what used to happen that, you know, uh, it continuously sends an error message because uh, BHOM did not understand uh, the cancelled state from the ITSM side. So uh, that was causing a kind of like, you know, a uh, no, lot of noise because we continuously receive uh, the incident information back and we try to again, you know, go and open the same incident. Right. So that was going into the indefinite loops and that was creating a lot of noise again. So we work with uh, solving these kind of use cases uh, and then we stopped uh, sending the update if the incident is actually into the cancer state. This particularly, you know, help in reducing the uh, event noise. So this was, you know, pretty much uh, uh, from uh, the BHOM 24.3 and uh, uh, releases. Uh, what I wanted to cover here is uh, because I'm owning uh, the petrol agent and KM as well. Uh, uh, so I thought that I will also bring uh, some of the KM update that we are doing continuously, especially into uh, the Azure uh, area and uh, the Google Cloud area. As you can see that, you know, in, in Azure, uh, so we provide the custometric support, right? So what does this mean that... Uh, uh, let's say, you know, earlier when this uh, custometric support was not there, and if there is any new service introduced by, you know, this uh, Azure cloud vendor, uh, and that service uh, is not, yet, you know, started uh, to be supported out of the box by Azure KM, then customer come back to us. And then, you know, customers ask us to uh, provide the support for these services. Uh, but it's basically takes time because we have to develop, we have to do this full testing. Uh, and then we have to release this finally. So it takes sometimes, you know, one month to two months for us to develop and release. 
but with this custom metric support now users can actually uh, you know uh, go and identify that what metrics they wanted to monitor and then they can you know put this uh, query under this custom metric support uh, in the in the custom metrics and then they can you know start uh, receiving the values from those custom metrics so immediately you will see that instead of waiting for us uh, two to uh, three months of time right you can actually very well go and query and you can start monitoring for those newly added uh, you know cloud services uh, we continuously doing around uh, enhancement around the Google Cloud, uh, which is uh, we introduced this recently, you know, PostgreSQL, MySQL, and SQL service services also as a part of Google Cloud KM. We already have uh, AWS KM. We continuously improve uh, upon the AWS KM. Uh, we have provided more, you know, supports for the various services. So we continuously doing that. Uh, we have also introduced recently uh, the new KM, which is the Ceph storage KM. Uh, with that, actually, you should be able to monitor now Ceph storage as well. And one of the thing that we did is around uh, the petrol agent high availability KM. You know uh, where uh, this this KM was. I know previously, you know, uh, it was actually provided through the community uh, support. Uh, we are uh, through the community channel where you know customers often come to us and ask for the supportability of this KM. Then uh, it goes uh, basically into that kind of discussion, right? Whether this is the community driven content, then uh, we will not support and things like that. But we realize that uh, while working with the customer, that this KM is absolutely needed because, uh, especially in, in the scenarios where you have you know remote monitoring in place and you are doing monitoring for you know, uh, thousands of servers, what if, you know, your one agent goes down? So uh, we introduced this, uh, uh, not introduced, we revamped this petrol agent high availability game that can be used for the same purpose. Uh, uh, so so that your agent becomes redundant, right? So one agent goes down, then the same, uh, the, the next agent basically picks up the monitoring, right? So, so you're continuously, your monitoring continuity uh, will still remain there, right? So that's that's the uh, function of this game. So that, that is supported now. A uh, couple of more enhancement around uh, uh, the Azure, AWS, OpenShift, you know, PostgreSQL. Uh, but one of the things that uh, a key highlight here is the synthetic monitoring. So. I'm not sure, you know, if you have got the chance to look into the synthetic monitoring uh, KM. Uh, so we are previously, you know, uh, having this uh, Microsoft Silk Performer, uh, which was a tool actually uh, provided by the partners. And that partner basically announced the end of life uh, for the Microsoft Silk Performer. Uh, so what we realize is basically we need to, uh, you know, provide a mechanism to our customer. Uh, we need to support our uh, customers, even though the partner has decided to uh, do the end of life. So what we did, we uh, investigated that, you know, how we can uh, quickly, uh, you know, adopt uh, some of the technology, uh, which will make sense for our customer and which is also, you know, very well known in the field. So this synthetic monitoring, what it does basically, it... Uh, uh, records and Selenium scripts. So you can use the Selenium tool. It's uh, Selenium tools using Selenium tool. You can actually record in Python script and that Python script can be exported as an input to synth synthetic KM. And then this synthetic KM basically, you know, extract the metrics for the response time and the availability and the accuracy attributes, right? So this helps you to at least because uh, when I was looking into uh, uh, the Microsoft Field Performer, mostly customers are using, you know, these uh, three metrics. Again, there are location constraints as well, where customer wanted to uh, see, you know, uh, from which location my site is down, whether I wanted to call it out. Uh, if from this location my site is down, I wanted to call out 90% downtime or 10% downtime, but because it does not impact my whole system, things like that, right? So. So we, we we started from the basic and then now we are uh, moving towards uh, the more uh, advanced approach where we will be also uh, bringing in the location concept into uh, the picture. So this is the new KM which you can try it. It's a part of your you know uh, server license. Uh, if you have server license, this KM should be available. You can use it. You can play around with this. Uh, 
uh, interesting thing that is uh, it is also used by internal BMC IT team and I see you know currently uh, some of the customers who are already replacing this and they are very happy with this. One of the you know limitation at this point of time uh, with this KM is that uh, you know this KM uh, supports uh, only 40 URL monitoring uh, from one agent so that is one of the limitation uh, but you know uh, the the upcoming release is actually going to address these challenges as well, uh, where we have, uh, you know, uh, done some POCs and which which is already, you know, productized that POC, where we see that this game can now, you know, uh, extend from 40 URL monitoring to 100 URL monitoring uh, from one agent. So we have identified those technologies which we are, you know, working on. So that is an another enhancement that or or and or rather enhancement rather uh, we have added in UK. Uh, just to give you you know some uh, uh, architectural flow uh, for the synthetic game, as you can see that you know in this particular flow, how does this go? Basically, uh, it's a Java collector, uh, and then uh, Selenium basically uh, records the script, and then the Selenium uh, can basically uh, you know, uh, export that uh, recorded script as a Python. It has the capability, uh, and uh, you know there are policy configuration available that can be you know uh, configured uh, to run and extract these kind of metrics. So these things can be run, uh, and we also what we do is uh, for one particular URL, you know, we create it as a device. Uh, previously, uh, we were actually creating that under the agent. But now we are bringing up that as an our devices uh, for some reasons, because many customers, you know, wanted to uh, say that okay, device one, device two is basically belongs to one customer, and device two, device three, uh, device three and device four basically belongs to you know uh, some other customers. So that is all now introduced. Uh, the the only thing that is not currently uh, available for you is uh, the location based monitoring, which we are doing it uh, in the upcoming release. So this is the overall, you know, architecture flow uh, diagram for uh, the synthetic AM. With this, actually, you know, I will like to hand it over uh, to Samantha uh, because this kind of like, you know, completed uh, my session today to talk about what's there uh, in 24.3. Okay, um, so just a couple of reminders. Um, normally what we try to do with these webinars is put some additional resources. Um, we will be sharing out these slides today, so don't worry about trying to remember what the links are. Um, we get these from our documentation department, um, so they're helpful links to take you to content that will be useful for this particular webinar session. So I'll be sharing that out post-event. So um, some of these links, for example, around the policy-based situations, upgrading, which is obviously something important for our customers, especially when you're doing migrations. These are all really helpful for you. So um, that will be shared with you at a later date. Um, probably in the next 48 hours or so, I will try to send out all the recording and information. If we can just move to the next slide, Amal. Um, so a couple of call to actions for you. Um, so obviously going through the BMC documentation, which was the past page that we were sharing. Um, we will also share the YouTube link um, this is where we put all of our webinars, any content that's created by support. Um, we will have short how to videos. Do subscribe to there and I will share that in the thank you email that will come out to you post event today. Um, and then the other piece is uh, we work very closely with our customers and obviously our product managers are now trying to do a lot of these regular sessions. It's been quite a while since we've done the BHOM update. Um, so please reach out to Amal. He's on LinkedIn. Um, if any of you do want to spend some time, um, feel free to fill in the survey that will come out post event um, and let me know and I will connect you directly with him, especially if you have specific challenges or requests. Um, and then obviously from identifying use cases, if there is anything that you feel is uh, something new that we haven't shared, it's not in the features or functionality, it ties in very nicely with our ideas portal, which is on communities. Again, I will share that link. If there is anyone on today's session that needs any type of training or shown how to use communities and where to put your suggested ideas, I'm more than happy for you to reach out to me directly and I will spend some time with you or your team and show you how to do that as well. Um, and it's a great segue for our next slide. Um, we work with our UX team. 
So it's a design partnership that we've got. We want to hear back from you. So whether you're a partner or you're one of our customers, what the design partnership is, is collaboration with product management. So here today, it's Amol. Um, all the product managers work very closely together. As you'll know that a lot of our products do entwine with each other. Um, we want you to participate. Um, we want to do some POCs with you. There's beta programs. So if you are interested, then feel free um, to join. Our next slide will show you how to do that. So if you do have your camera at hand, um, if you can move to the next slide, Amol, um, you can scan the QR code or you'll be able to click that link, which you can see at the left hand side. And again, these will be shared out for you in um, PPT format so you can see what we've shared with you today. Um, and then if we can move to the final slide before we go to Q&A, um, there's one more after this one. Obviously, thank you, everyone. I think we've got um, right. additional resources. Yes. So um, there is a question for you in the chat. Um, this is from Philippe. Um, he's asking, is there any control in an uploaded file? So I don't know if you want to take that question, Amol, um, and I will see if I can find Philippe um, to unmute him. If Philippe, you want to come live and talk to us. And then in the interim, I will start unmuting everyone. So if you do have any questions, put them into the Q&A or raise your hand. We'll come to you after. So, um, yes, Amol, if you can answer Philippe's question. Uh, so if you can uh, repeat the question, like uh, you want to have the control on the content or uh, I, I didn't get it that uh, fully. Yes, yeah, so this relates, do you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Thanks, Philippe. Yes, so this relates to one of the feature, the, the first features you presented about uploading a new DDA, con I mean, new dynamic enrichment content okay. in, uh -huh. in the policy. So uh -huh. is that uh, an update file that adds or modifies existing? Is that the full data? Is there any um, control validation audit on who uh, and how the data is pushed? So. Uh... When you say controlled validation, I mean, we, we don't uh, do the validation, you know, uh, from a user's perspective, but, you know, if, uh, uh, let's say the schema of the data is changed, for example, right? So we don't accept that. Uh, what we accept is uh, the modified value uh, into the existing data or probably some new uh, addition or uh, the deletion, right? So that's, that's the only thing that is allowed at the moment from that uh, dynamic enrichment. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Philippe. Um, any questions why we've got you off mute? Any others? Okay. I don't know um, if there's any um, other call to actions, Amol, or anything specifically you want to highlight where we give the opportunity for anyone that does have any questions because we don't have any further ones. Is there anything specific from today you want to highlight? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... As you see that, you know, I have highlighted a couple of uh, new capabilities uh, into B Home, uh, uh, and that's basically an effort to also, you know, uh, align uh, along with the uh, feature uh, parity as well uh, with the TSOM. Uh, so, if you still have, you know, any questions or or you are uh, you wanted to give any feedback, uh, I am there. Basically, you can connect to me. You know how to connect. Uh, me, maybe uh, Samantha can, when she will send out uh, this uh, document to you, uh, you will have my email ID also to connect. I will be very happy to have uh, the demos with you if you want. Uh, I can also, uh, you know, call uh, one of my uh, technical team along with me uh, to have more detailed discussions uh, so that we can hear you from your pain points and then we can incorporate those pain points into the upcoming releases. So we definitely, you know, wanted to work with you guys very closely. Uh, and then, you know, uh, drive your uh, reason is through our product. Thank you, Amal. I know we did have a hand raised, but it's gone down. So I don't know if that person does want to speak still. Um, the other thing also to sort of um, remind, and I will put this on your thank you email, is we do have on the BMC front page product demos. They're run by our architect team. So if you do want to have a front end GUI to play around with to see what sort of features, use cases there are, I would highly recommend that as well. I did do a session some time ago with um, Amal's colleague, um, you're on front, and it was in our AI Ops series, and we showed and demo mode the um, AI ops version of it so if any of you are interested in 
generic generic demos with certain use cases i will put a link also into that email that will show you where to go and again i've got a team of people that can help you with that as well the main thing is we want to help you adopt yep. okay um Elia, I don't know if um, it was you that was raising your hand. I think it may have been if you've still got your question. If you have, then feel free to come off mute. Otherwise, I will close the call early if we haven't got any further questions. Okay. I know. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. I can. can you hear Hello. Me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, I have one question. Um, uh, the new uh, possibility or data in events, uh, the annotations, from the petrol agents okay. can we use it in the dashboards because we have the need that we want to show the annotations in a dashboard mm -hmm. okay so uh, as of now uh, it is only part of event uh, those annotations and uh, uh, this is also you know based on on demand so when you go and open the detail of that event then only it will uh, when you click on that particular annotation tab then only it will give you the information uh as i said that that this feature uh, is currently a feature flag uh, but i am taking your input uh, because we are working on uh, another release for this annotation feature so i will take this input and uh, i will see you know how we can accommodate it in the upcoming release oh cool thank you yeah Thank you for that. I don't know, um, Amol, do we want to put it into the um, ideas process or are you able to do that for Elliot? Uh, I can do that uh, okay. in the idea. Yeah, I can do that. Wonderful. Okay. And yeah. um, if we get that, um, we will at some point share that with everyone so we can get the votes up as well. So thank you for that um, uh, sure. request, Elliot. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. I don't see any other questions. So... Um, Thank you everyone for joining them all. Thank you for sharing this. Um, just a quick update to say we've got quite a lot of content coming up. Um, there is a webinar page that I put all of our hosted events. If any of you are interested in Netrio, which we recently acquired, I have got a session next week um, and Amol will hopefully be supporting that one as well. Um, that's on the 1st of October. October, I think, or sorry, forgive me, the 3rd of October. It's an introduction to our new portfolio. So if anyone is interested, I will also share that in, uh, link in the thank you as well. So actually, there's a lot of links to share, but I'll make it as simple as possible. And Amol, thank you very much for presenting today. Hopefully everyone has found that useful and we'll certainly be connecting again soon with some more features and functionality. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for joining the call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.